So I think if you're even remotely interested in purchasing an awning for your trailer, you're probably going to want to watch this video. Okay, we're trying to take this off and the wind has picked it up. It's bad. No. Yep. Okay, I'm ready to leave this campsite now. What do we do? <laughs> So if you've followed our channel for any time, you've probably seen me go back and forth on these awnings. Uh, there's been a time where I've been completely against them. Then I kind of jumped back into them with smaller trailers. And now this summer, we've taken out the 23-0 Peregrine awning for over two months now. And I'm back to being split 50-50. There's some things I love about these awnings and then some things that are... They're almost deal breakers for me. So I'm excited to share with you just so you guys have a better insight into what these are like, just in case you are interested in purchasing one. So I brought you guys down to the sunniest spot I could find, and that's so I can just really drive home this point. And that is, there's no awning out there that is this large that's going to give you this much protection from the sun in terms of square footage, meaning you can walk all around your camper and be protected from that glaring sun wherever you're at. But can you really go wherever you want? Yes, it offers you all this sun protection, but it's only on one side of your trailer. And oftentimes that means you only can put that awning out on the side of the trailer where you're able to park. So like where we're at today, I can only back in that trailer into one spot. And so if this is a cold location and I want that warm sun in the morning and I want that shade in the afternoon, but my trailer's in reverse and giving me the opposite, there's no way around that. One thing I've found recently is that it's really fast setup. I used to think the Batwing awning took me too much time, but now it's like 30 seconds to a minute. Well, 30 to 60 seconds to fan out the awning and put the straps to the trailer. But you do have to put in the guy lines and stake that down. These awnings remind me of the tent manufacturers back in the 80s and 90s. Remember when they used to make the tent sleeve or the bag just big enough for you to just push it in and get it to fit and nowadays they're starting to make those bags larger so you can throw in a tent easy just on the go well that's how these awnings are right now one time i'll do it and i can get it to fit in there and get that zipper just right but then the next time i go out by myself and it is so hard to stuff it the zipper's getting caught i'm pushing it all up there and that's on a low camper. You have no idea how much harder it gets when that awning is even higher. But on the flip side, if you have two people collapsing these awnings, it is a lot easier. But what if you want sidewall attachments so you can have like a tent like this? Well, I'm finding, you know, Bean makes an attachment right now. It's a prototype that they're letting us use. They set up really easy. So that's something very convenient about the Batwing awning. You can spread out that awning in seconds, like I said, so you're getting the protection from the rain and the sun. And then that buys you time to put up those side walls, where if you're putting up you know, a normal tent, you're doing it all out in the rain and it's gonna take more than 30 seconds to put that up. And you remember earlier when I talked about how difficult it is to put up the awning or put away the awning on a tall trailer? Imagine if you have an off-road trailer. With the off-road trailer, the awning's taller, obviously. And so when you're stuffing that bag, you're up on your tiptoes. Sometimes you're even up on the fenders to get up there or standing on these rails. Trust me, it is not fun and it is not easy, especially on a windy day. Okay, we're trying to take this off and the wind has picked it up and I am holding it by my feet. Yes. Got it? Maybe. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> we got it. We got it? I think for now, I mean, until the wind dies, we'll just hold it in place. Okay. This is why I would get a square awning. Our Look fingers, at this. our poor fingers. Yeah. I was like, you're gonna get hurt bad. I didn't think you were gonna let it go. It took my hand and I, I, well, I, well, I couldn't get my finger you. out. No, like my finger was stuck in the rope because it pulled so hard. Yeah, it wrapped up on her feet. Oh, shoot. What? It doesn't have a hinge. So it's broke? It's bent like that. No. Yeah, there's no hinge. Okay, I'm ready to leave this campsite now. Well, what do we do? How are we going to get this put away? That was a rookie mistake, but how do you leave on a windy day? How do you leave camp? 
wind not only is a factor with setup, it's also a factor with teardown. And it doesn't even have to be that much wind. So the other day we had a big wind come up and we felt hostage. We needed to leave camp and we couldn't because we knew if we took out those guy lines and we started folding her down, the wind would catch it. So I waited for a break in the wind, which it was pretty low. I unattached it and all of a sudden, poof, it took out of my hands and it wasn't that windy. Now, if you had two people, you probably could manhandle it a little bit better and keep it protected, but it gets quite dangerous. Like May and I did it the other day and the guy lines were ripping at our fingers and trying to hold it. It was like holding on to a parachute. So for us, that just makes it so tough because if you pull into a site that it's windy, you can't set up your awning. If you wanna leave and go home and it's windy for three straight days, you can't take down your awning, you are stuck there. To me, that is just like a huge issue. So it's starting to push me more towards the simple square awnings and be much easier to set up and take down on a windy day. And it makes me feel a lot more comfortable with my investment and with my time so I don't have to sit around at a campsite when I'm ready to go. So this one is a really cool bonus that I never would have thought of before getting an awning like this. If you have the awning up and then you put up the tent attachments, the side walls, you now have this nice cozy space, but on a rainy day, at some point, you need to take all this down and go home. Well, when you have a clam tent, you start throwing the chairs and the kids' bikes and everything in the tent to keep it protected from the rain. But as you're moving things, you have to start bringing it into the car because when you collapse that tent, it's gonna go all over the stuff, you know, it, it just doesn't work. Okay, just in case that didn't make sense, if you think about a typical shelter or a tent, it has poles. And so to take those sidewalls down, you have to pull out the pole, which collapses the whole thing. You can't keep it up. Where with the Batwing awning, it's the support that always stays up, but you can pull down the sidewalls, kind of tearing down that tent, and you still have that protection from the sun, the rain, and keeping your gear from not getting wet. And then at the last second, collapsing her down. So I keep coming back to that 30 second setup. And another advantage with that is with most shelters, once they're wet and you push that back into the bag, you're gonna have to pull that out at home to let it dry out so you don't get mold and mildew. Well, that takes a lot of time because that means setting up the entire tent. With this, you just unzip it, 30 seconds, throw that awning up if it's not a windy day, just let it sit without the stakes and then put it back in when it dries off. And because the awning is just flat and there's not a lot of crevices, it dries out really quick. The typical side entry tents we use, like this light speed instant up canopy or our clam tent, we don't have to use guy lines. We stake them down to the ground just at the corners and that's been enough for us in all situations. And that leads to a much safer situation at the camp because nobody's tripping over guy lines in the dark and in the day. With these Batwing awnings, these large awnings, imagine the guy lines coming out of them. They're coming out towards our tow vehicle. They're coming out into the middle of the camp. Basically everywhere where we walk on 180 degrees of our camper, there's a guy line that's gonna take us out at the neck or at the ankle. Um, you get used to it, you can get reflectors on it, things like that, but that is one um, issue, especially for new people coming to your camp who've never been there before. And my last pro and con here. The pro, they just look cool. May actually doesn't like the look of the Batwing awning, but I think it just makes the trailer look tough and uh, it just belongs out in nature. It just fits out here. And then the con, the cost. These things are gonna cost quite a bit. Now this tent behind me and other pop-up style tents, they're not going to break the bank. And the one thing I forgot to mention, they're portable. Our family can move them around the campsite for the best fit for that site. And again, that's something you cannot do with an awning attached to your camper. Here's my recommendation for you. If you're on a budget, get yourself a side entry tent. We've been using them for years and they have worked great for our family. 
If you have a little bit more money, I would go with an instant pop-up like a clamshell tent or the light speed like we mentioned in this video. Now I won't push you away from an awning attached to a trailer. I still think it's something I desire. Just make sure you have that phone with you and you're following the weather. And you really need to understand that you still need an additional pop-up tent to go with that for the days that the awning will not work out. And those pop-up tents like a clam, they're a lot heavier and longer than most people realize, so factor that into your trailer setup. Check out this playlist here. It's about our side entry tents we use. And as usual, guys, stay safe out there and enjoy this winter uh, travel that's up ahead of you.